My name is Josh Wojnarowski, and today I'm going to be showing you how to film yourself. All right, so the first tip for this video is buy a tripod. Please buy a tripod. I know 99 of you just raised your eyebrow, like seems kind of obvious, but there's somebody out there who's trying to do some weird combination of like their shoe or their wallet or their keys. Keep your shoes on your feet and go out and buy yourself a tripod. It could be something small like this tabletop tripod. It could be something bigger like I'm filming on now. A good tripod is gonna make filming faster. It's gonna allow you to get way more angles and it's crucial for the rest of the tips in this video. Which brings me to my next tip, which is gonna be shoot multiple angles of every action. This is the foundation for filming yourself. If you forget everything else I say in the rest of this video and keep filming with your left shoe, that's totally fine. Now, one way to do this would be set up multiple cameras, but that can be a little bit cumbersome. So the alternative is just go through the same action multiple times and record it from different angles. Ironically, while a tripod is necessary, if your video starts to feel like they just slapped the camera on a tripod, that's when it kind of starts to get boring. So by cutting between different angles, it prevents you from holding the same shot for too long and keeps the viewer engaged, which is super important. Now, this goes into my next tip, which is shoot with a variety of focal lengths. Ideally, you want one wide lens, one medium lens, and one telephoto lens. I shoot on a Canon EOS R, so for me, I shoot on a 16 to 35 for my wide shots, a 50 millimeter for my medium shots, and an 85, which is kind of just getting into that telephoto range. Now, if you've got a little bit more of a modern smartphone, conveniently, you're gonna have three different lenses built in. But even if you don't, you can still get a similar effect by just moving your camera closer or farther away. Using different focal lengths to tell your story allows you to choose what you want to emphasize. A wider focal length is awesome for establishing shots or when you want to show off vast landscapes or a new location. While a medium or tight shot allows you to pick out subjects or people within the frame and focus more on them. Now, even if you aren't super into cinematography, a good rule of thumb I like to use to shoot things is just shoot one wide shot, one medium shot, one close-up shot. Done. Plain and simple. There are a million ways to shoot a sequence, but if you just don't have a lot of time or didn't do enough planning, that keeps it straightforward and is usually enough to tell a little story. All right, and the next tip I want to talk about is mixing in some handheld shots. The real reason we need to keep that shoe on our foot is so we can walk around, move our feet, and get some shots with actual movement in them. Depending on the location, you might want to film yourself vlog style. You could film your feet walking. You might even want to film some details of the location you're shooting at. I notice in my own sequences that if I'm just going tripod shot, tripod shot, tripod shot, I start to lose focus. My mind starts to wander. So adding some handheld shots with some real movement in them keeps me engaged and just breathes a little life into your edit. All right, next let's talk about faking camera motion. If you didn't have time to get handheld shots or weren't able to, or you just need more movement in your sequence, you can always fake camera motion in post. Now, the majority of editing programs should be able to do this. Essentially, you can zoom in on your clip and then use that extra information to either pan your clip left or right or zoom in or zoom out. The simplest way to do this is zoom into your clip about 5% and set a position keyframe, and then go to the end of your clip and set a new position keyframe, and bam, you're done. Oh, and if you wanna zoom in or zoom out, do the same thing, but just set scale keyframes. Now you can do this to make the camera sort of follow you a bit if you're moving within your frame, or you can sort of use it to lead into your next clip if there's movement in the same direction. This can be super helpful. My best advice though, is just keep it subtle. Don't get super carried away or it just looks a little bit crazy. All right, let's talk shot lists. For the sake of this video, all a shot list is, is a list of shots you need to get to finish your video. Now on a big production, these can get very detailed, but for the sake of my YouTube videos, it normally just has a location, a scene, the type of shot, and a brief description. Now, I'll be the first to say it. I don't like making shot lists. I would so much rather 
just grab my camera and head off and go shoot. But the one thing I hate more than shot listing is getting back from a location and realizing I didn't get everything I need. Son of a- Big picture, I shot list things that are crucial for my video, but a lot of the time I will just put like hiking b-roll and leave it at that. I would recommend grouping your shots by location or camera setup though. That way you can batch shoot without setting up everything, tearing it down and having to reset it up later. So don't shoot chronologically, shoot by location or camera setup. This just makes things a whole lot faster. All right, my last tip is gonna be just let the camera roll. You've got your focal lengths, you got your different angles, you've done everything else I talked about in this video. Now just turn the camera on and let life unfold a little bit. Whether it's your camera falling over, you falling over. <laughs> what did I drop? Filming yourself isn't about scripting everything out and being picture perfect. Nothing's gonna make you more relatable and make your video a little more fun than having some raw moments in there. Ow! <laughs> 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 for the vlog. If you are interested in some of the tools I use to film myself, I'll link them all down below. But all that aside, grab your camera, grab your tripod, and go out there and start making some awesome sequences. 